Hello everyone, welcome to another video of Keen. In this video, we will go through with you on Keen's new 1.4.1 and above file structure along with certain customization demonstration on how you can create your own custom JS and your custom SAS. Uh, before we go through that, we will also run through with you on how you can fully utilize and customize Keen's build tool. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So before we even start this video, we highly recommend that you view or watch our previous two videos, which is on the installation and kicking start your very first project with Keen. And also, um, in order to actually fully understand this video, you of course need to purchase and download Keen. So once you've downloaded Keen on your computer, um, the file will look something like this. And what you do is you just extract it to your, um, to your computer. And in Keen's root folder, you see three main folders, which is the design, docs, and theme. In design, it's basically just the sketch file and PSD files within Keen. Um, the docs is where we keep all of Keen's official documentation. So you can have a look at our quick start. And all the steps for installation is here. And then next will be uh, our theme folder. Now in our theme folder we have three main packages our angular, classic and default package. Our angular package is where we compile and organize all of uh, Keen's angular files. So it's basically Keen's theme or Keen's um, structure using angular's framework. So if you're an angular uh, developer this will come very fairly uh, familiar to you. In classic is the old school way of doing things with um, uh, templates or team templates. It's basically a compiled Keen theme where all the demo files and all the assets are already compiled to CSS and JS and all the demos are already for you in HTML or within each folder here. And you do not need any build tools here. It's because classic is basically the default theme but minus the build tools. We'll get into the build tools um, shortly. Uh, let's go through what we have in the default package. In the default package is Keen's most used package. It's basically the package where you can use um, Keen in the most effective and flexible way, where you can use um, or recycle assets, or not say recycle, you can compile and deploy assets, whether it's JS, whether it's SAS, whether it's CSS whichever it is, or media files, and then deploy it into your project folder um, instantly. And we will demonstrate to you within this video as well. So let's look into the default package. We have the source and tools right off the bat. In our source, or no, no, let's look at tools first. In our tools, we have our gulp, our build, our gulp.js, our gulp file.js, and our package. Now, gulp is a cross-platform streaming task runner that lets you guys to automate uh, like a few development tasks such as SAS compilation or JS minification all within a single command line. Package.json is where we list all of Keen's um, third-party vendor files that is required within Keen. And our GUP folder is where we keep all of our GUP tasks. Um, we do not need to worry about most of the gulp or the package. Um, what we need to really look into um, is the build.json, which is Keen's main build tool. Um, we'll get to that uh, shortly. Let's look into the source folder. In the source folder, we have our assets our, and our demo files or demo folders. In our assets, we have um, JS, media, SaaS, and vendors. So all of Keen's JS will be stored within JS and all Keen's SAS will be stored within SAS, similar with media and vendors. Now vendors are basically third-party vendor files or vendor libraries that is not included within node modules. Now node modules is um, created or generated by first installing node.js, which is an open source cross-platform JavaScript runtime environment. Um, and running yarn or npm 
which is basically package managers that automates uh, the process of installing and upgrading third-party libraries or plugins for Keen. But all um, within Yarn or NPM, there may be some uh, plugins that is not packaged within any package manager and therefore needs to be included within Keen simply because Keen uses it. Uh, so in order for Keen to have these relevant uh, dependencies, we include it in our assets, our source assets vendors folder. And some of these vendors here are also licensed, um, but do not worry. Uh, by downloading, purchasing and downloading Keen, you are fully licensed to use all of these plugins that comes within Keen's package. Now, going into, um, let's go media first. Going to media, we just have our like images or maybe some SVGs and uh, whatnot. So you again, you are free to use any of these images as you want. In our JS folder, we have team and vendors. Now we have another separate or another vendor file in the JS folder simply because in the vendors within the JS, like SS, JS, and vendors. Vendors within the JS folder are basically JS files that is customized by Keen by us for those plugins. Certain plugins, like for example our Bootstrap Date Picker, uh, may be limited in certain functionality. So we extended uh, we extended the Date Picker Bootstrap's Date Picker uh, plugin with certain functions that um, make it easier for you guys to use. So these are basically Keen's customized um, JS files that overrides, not so overrides, extends the uh, default third-party vendor libraries. Now looking into our theme folder, we have our three main theme files or theme folders. We have our core demos and pages. Now in our core, we have our um, Keen's core JS libraries. Now the core JS files within Keen are developed or basically written with pure vanilla JavaScript code. Now, uh, the reason why we did this and not depend or use any jQuery within it is so that, that um, we can provide an easier solution for you guys to integrate Keen within like uh, other front-end frameworks such as like React, Angular, or Vue frameworks. And that makes our core JS code such as the menu, off-canvas header, and whatnot purely flexible, uh, optimized, and not dependent in any sort of uh, third-party dependency. Moving on to our pages first. Now our pages is basically certain custom pages that comes within Keen, such as the um, like calendars or the charts or our wizards, or even like our data tables or forms, or even things such as our login or profile um, pages within Keen. Those pages may require some JS uh, functionality. So all those um, JS functionalities are basically stored or kept and organized within the theme slash um, pages folder. Going to our demos, we'll see our six demos in a moment. We are definitely going to be adding more demos in, in the near future. But in the moment, we have demo one and demo two and demo three and uh, all the JS files that's required within each demo is just located here. Now, as you can see, some demos only have layout.js and demo 1 has an site secondary, for example. This is because each demo has its own layout or its own structure, which then uh, requires its own JS files to be customized or initialized to ensure that the theme of each demo is it's highly uh, optimize for that demo and also each of this demo is independent from each other it doesn't share any uh, it does share like global core JS files but you can use like demo 2 uh, by itself without using anything from demo 1 next let's have a look into our SAS folder which we have um, a similar layout structure as our JS files where we have a bootstrap uh, theme and vendors similar to JS our vendors is where we keep our 
SAS files that overrides or extends the uh, vendor uh, plugins or vendor libraries that comes with Keen. And similar, we have like uh, Bootstrap Date Picker or even things like Google Maps or GMaps, Font Awesome or uh, Full Calendar SAS. So all these are basically SAS um, extensions from Keen for us that, that customizes all these uh, third-party libraries to ensure that it fits Keen's look and feel um, and, and optimize and extend it in a way that you guys could actually use a lot more efficiently and easily. Uh, Bootstrap is one of our larger um, extensions uh, because Keen is a essentially a bootstrap based um, uh, template or theme, I mean theme, but there are some parts within bootstrap that we also feel that may be limited. So what we did is we extended uh, bootstrap with more functionality, like we did, we've created like additional button functionality, like um, maybe we have additional colors, additional states within uh, Keen's buttons. And then in our theme, we also have a similar file structure. We have record, demos, and pages. Core is where we keep all of um, Keen's core source files. We have our base, general, layouts, and whatnot. And in our demos, we have all of Keen's demos. So all of our, uh, like demo one, will have its own um, SAS, and demo two will also have its own SAS. And similar with the demo JS files, they are independent from one another. Each demo is independent from one another. Uh, we only share the global core um, SAS files. You can use demo one or demo two by itself without even using or touching or even customizing other demos. Pages, similar with our the JS fo uh, folder structure. Uh, pages is where we keep all of our custom Pages within Keen, such as our blog, error, or invoice, or pricing, or user pages. So in here, for example, in our pricing, we have two types of pricings. So this is where we keep our pricing SAS. And our config is where we keep our config um, SAS file. So this is basically Keen's default package. And this is the package that we'll be using to demonstrate how to customize Keen. Now, if you haven't seen how to install and kickstart your very first project with Keen, we suggest to watch those two videos first because we will go through on the Keen's installation and creating a new project folder really quickly. So, first thing we need to do here is to demonstrate this a lot better. Let's create a new project folder called My Keen. And in this uh, folder, we can create. We need to create an assets folder so that we can deploy our assets into our deploy Keen's assets into our project folder, like immediately. And as mentioned in our previous videos, we recommend for you guys to place the the default package source files into your project folder so that you can view the. Um, the, the, the Keen source and your own project files uh, within the same IDE folder or ID basically. So let's go ahead and do just that. Um, oh, we need to go to, uh, let's go to team default and copy our default and put it into our new newly created app. Or project. Okay, let's rename this to Keen Source. What we need to do here is we need to run Yarn so that we install node modules and all the other third-party libraries into our our uh, basic Keen Source. So let's go ahead and do that and type in Yarn. And let it run for a bit. Now, whilst this is running, let's have uh, let's go through a little bit on Keen's um, multi-demo concept. 
What do we mean by a key a multi demo concept is Keen was basically designed to support uh, multi demos where we have like one to six, like six demos at the moment. And as mentioned, each, each demo has its own layout, has its own like JS uh, initializers, its own SAS configurations and whatnot. And because we have uh, a few demos, um, our main components like uh, our like our base or our typography or our widgets or are shared across all demos. You can use any of our global um, any and you can basically use any of our components, any of our elements within Keen. So, for example, if you look at our demos, you can grab like this uh, elements here, or maybe some other elements like maybe this elements here or this element here to put it into other demos. It's like plug and play different, plug and play like elements from demo two and plug it into demo three and it'll work perfectly fine. Simply because the elements or the components within Keen are 100% um, flexible and customized and fully optimized for each individual demo, providing that you use that demo's layout or demo's um, assets. So now that we have done um, running yarn, let's go ahead and run gub just to see our files get compiled. So if you go to our keen source, you get to see our demos pop up. I'm not saying demos, our assets file pop up. Yep, so it's done. So this is our assets file, that is our old compiled assets files for keen. Uh, let's go ahead and also build our demos. So we need to run gulp build to build all of Keen's demos. Let's go ahead and do that. And you can see in our this folder within the Keen source, our demos are being built. Like so. So as mentioned earlier, where we have a multi-demo concept, demo one will store all of Keen's components um, page elements. Uh, components such as our calendar charts and whatnot, and then custom page elements like our blog, our FAQ, stuff like that within demo one. And all our other demos will only contain the layout of that specific demo. So demo two will only have like a dashboard type uh, HTML code and our uh, index. And maybe a demo four will also have only the dashboard and the index. However, as mentioned, you can always bring components from demo one and put it into demo two and it works perfectly fine. So that now our um, our project is ready. Um, let's go ahead and open it in our IDE and have a look. Okay, so here is our IDE. We have our keen source here and everything else will be our project uh, folder. This will be our project's assets folder. And what we can do now is, if you look into our build.json, which is Keen's build tool, this is where all the magic happens within Keen. So here we have the name and version of Keen at the moment, and we have two main uh, parameters within our JSON file, which is the config and build. In the config uh, parameter is where we define all of the settings or configuration within Keen to be compiled to your assets folder. For example, if you look in our, into the demo parameter here, it's currently left blank. Basically, if you're leaving blank, when you run Gulp, it will just compile all of Keen's demos uh, assets, or Keen, all of Keen's demo assets into your assets folder. But if you define here as, say, demo one, then what you'll be doing is you will only be compiling demo one's assets into your assets folder located here. Now debug is uh, def set to false by default and what it does when you set it to true it just creates additional notes as you uh, run gulp so that you understand um, or you see in more detail on what's happening behind the scenes when gulp is running. Next comes the compile RTL parameter. Uh, by default it's also enabled um, true is because what this does is uh, RTL is basically a right to left um, reading. Uh, it's basically for you to read right to left characters such as 
certain languages like uh, Arabic. Um, what it does is it just creates a version, an RTL version of the entire asset within Keen into your assets folder. If you do not need RTL within your project, you can uh, set this to false and you and Keen will not uh, compile or, or deploy any RTL assets into your assets folder. And what this does here to here is to just skip all these assets or third party libraries for an art when, when Keen is compiling a RTL version. The reason why we're skipping all this is simply because we do not need all these assets to be uh, right to left. Uh, because if you look at it, most of it is like icons and icons whether it's right to left or left to right is still an icon, it still reads the same. Similar with carousels and our calendars, it's just read the same way. And next comes all of our basic um, our functionality where if you want to uglify your JS, you can just set it to true or just minify your CSS or set it to true. Similar with our CSS and JS source maps. Our path parameter is where we define our source location or basically where our uh, keen source location is located. So, what this does is it uh, when we compile or when we run gulp, if we need to gulp would then look through all of our files and folders within our source and then do the necessary it needs to do to then compile and deploy the assets into your project assets folder or whatever, wherever you set your destination path to be. Similarly, for node modules, we just need to define where the node modules is located. If you have you no know, node modules and your or keen's source folders located somewhere else that is not within this, this folder structure, then you need to change this or update this to suit that new path. Then we have our demo API URL. What this does is actually um, within keen's demos is mainly for uh, demo purposes. Not it's not for your project in any way, shape, or form. It, what this does is. Some of Keen's demos, such as our data table, require some server-side uh, response. Like we need to co uh, communicate with our servers to return certain like data values into our data table. So this is where we define the URL where to receive those uh, that response. And the dist is where we just define where your assets folder is located. So if now at the moment by default is setting to the disk assets, which is here and here. So it's the, what we're doing is once you run gulp, it's deploying everything you need to do within the build, which we're going through shortly, to be placed within the assets folder. Now, if we change this to your project assets folder, then all of, all of everything within the build will be placed within your assets folder. So let's go ahead and just do that. Let's go ahead and grab our Asset our project assets path and put it here and then replace the slashes and save that. So now in a built parameter we have a couple of main parameters or sections in here, which is our vendors, demos and media. Now our media is fairly straightforward. We have a media file within our source, which is, let's go to assets and media. So we have a media file within our source. Like we show we have uh, SVGs, we have uh, uh, images and whatnot that use within Keen. And what this does is it just moves all these um, images from the source into the assets folder. So if you have certain assets that you've been used, you can just move it to uh, your project assets folder once you compile call. Next, uh, let's look into our vendors. Our vendors, we have base and custom. Uh, we go through a difference um, soon, but let's go through it within our base. We have mandatory uh, assets and optional assets. And then we do have a bundle uh, parameter. So within the built parameter, we have a very similar or if a very, very um, standard format where we always have a source and we always have a bundle. Uh, 
Now, what we mean by bundling is if we have a look into our source um, view here or parameter here, we have all of these vendor files like our jQuery proper bootstrap and all this third party vendor stuff. And even within our optional, we have quite a fair bit of libraries that we need to be included within Keen. So what this does is um, we are basically setting or configuring to, to indicate that all of this um, third party scripts or even styles such as like this to be bundled up into a single file called vendors.bundle.js for scripts with all vendors.bundle.css for styles. And then images and fonts have the similar concept as well because some third-party libraries uh, include images and fonts. So we include that as well. However, it's within its own um, folder. So now if you have a look at our assets, like if you're going to our destination vendors global. So if you go out of vendor and go to our global, we see our bundled JS and CSS files. So let's look at our CSS here. The first thing we see here is .ps and, and some CSS code. Now we need to find out what is that. We can look into our mandatory fields. We see that the very first style that we're using is the perfect scroll bar. And a perfect scroll bar is we're grabbing it from our node modules. So if we have a look into our node modules and look for perfect scroll bar here, go to our disk and go to our main CSS, oh sorry, our CSS is here, and we see the first thing is the exact same thing as our bundle. So now let's have a look at our next thing, or our next um, style that's being bundled up is Tether, so let's look at Tether, Tether here. And go to this CSS and this. So the first thing is tether dash elements. So if you do a quick search for tether, oops, that's how I spell tether. So this is where tether starts, and this is where perfect scroller ends. To know if perfect scroller ends here is we just have a look at our perfect scroller. Here, we go on the bottom. We see it's just our perfect scrollers um, responsive CSS. Go to our vendors, it is exact same responsive CSS. So, essentially, that is the idea between the source, the source, and the bundle. That is the idea on how this format works. We have all of source files listed within this uh, parameter, and everything within here will be bundled within its own uh, bundle, or within the bundle file that's declared within the same, uh, like this is called the base parameter. So if you look in the custom parameters, you have, similarly we have the uh, other third party libraries that is under, declared under custom. We have also the source, and the bundle. So every one of them has the same one source and bundle. Okay. So now that we understand the format of um, the source and bundles, let's have a look at what's the difference between like mandatory and optional. Like mandatory assets are, as it says, mandatory assets for Keen. All these assets are required. Uh, for Keen to work perfectly, if you remove any one of this or any one of this source or libraries are not included within Keen, Keen may break. However, optional um, libraries are also self-explanatory. They are optional. If your project, like for example, you do not need a time picker, you are free to remove it from the bundle. Similar with any other um, libraries here. So we, are, we recommend you guys to not remove anything from the mandatory if you need to remove something or if you feel that you do not need certain plugins or libraries within our 
um, optional list of uh, vendors, you can feel free to just remove any one of it. Next comes the difference between base and custom. Now base, as you can see, is all bundling all of our vendors, uh, all of our mandatory and optional uh, libraries, the party libraries, into a single uh, vendors.bundle.js file. However, if you look in our custom, we have a jQuery UI, which is still a third party vendor, but is compiled and uh, deployed into its own jQuery UI.bundle file. Now, the reason why we did this is because some of or more, all these custom vendor files here are not globally required within Keen. They are required for Keen at certain parts or certain pages of Keen, but not as a, in the global scale of things. So if you're using like uh, a page that requires maps, then what you do here is you just include the maps bundle. Or if you need, need a float chart, then you just e e uh, include the float.bundle. And also what we did here is we extracted or we removed all this uh, third-party vendor files from the global bundle file simply because all these vendor files are considered larger than what we feel is necessary to be included into the global uh, bundle file. Because if we include all this, like we, if we include like the whole entire data table uh, bundle into the global bundle file, then we may be bloating the global uh, vendor bundle file to a point where it's not optimized enough for your project once you deploy it to your production server. So if you, as and when you need it, you can just include it into your project. Next comes our demos. Now each of our demo have its own uh, similar format, which you have again the source and bundle. So the source is just defining where the uh, uh, source files are coming from, where the styles and where the scripts are coming from. And each of our demo has its own settings, like we have a demo one, we have a style for styles for demo one and uh, a JS file for demo one. And then it's also using our core uh, JS files. So if you have a look at our demo two, we have a core JS files, our demo two style and a demo two JS, and they're bundled up into its own individual style and script dot bundle files. Now we also have a skins parameter, and what this does is it just creates an additional layer or additional skin options on top of the demo. Now each of them of our demo we can, if we see in our demo files here, each of our demo will have its own like look and feel to it, but like demo one, if we have a look at our just uh, on here, we have certain skins that creates different um, setting or configurations for colors or paddings or styles or even like be creating different things or different look and feels. But for demo one within demo one itself, so for example, in demo one, let's say we want to change the color here, we can change it to either white, as you can see here, or maybe the top bar instead for uh, a a dark uh, brand color, we can uh, change it to a light color. So this is a good example of what skins does. And then we have our pages. Now our pages is basically, it's basically this, uh, if you have a look at what we went through within our uh, folders, yeah, go to our assets and then go to source and then go to theme and then go to pages, you see there are some pages here. So pages are basically defined such as like a full page uh, uh, within Keen, like a blog page is a full page. It's not like parts of or different components being, uh, put together to create a page. So like an invoice, uh, technically it's not a, doesn't have to be an independent page by itself or doesn't have to be uh, a page where you cannot put anything else into it. You definitely still can. It's just that we declare it as pages because it is a basically a page where you will use as a page, like an invoice is just an invoice. 
So what happens here is if you have a look here on demo one, we have this and in demo two, we have something similar. Now what happens here is if we look into our demo one and on demo, say demo three, or maybe demo three and demo five, if you look here, demo three will have a completely different looking field compared to demo five. And what this does here is it just overrides the default or the global configuration of each page with the demo configuration. So if you have a look in demo three, perhaps the page will have like um, blue or purple or certain colors that the demo is uh, themed as. And in demo five, the same page or the same page assets like the uh, blog or the um, the blog or the invoice or and items like that, or pages like that will have a different color scheme such as in demo 5 we will have green instead of say purple or blue. So this is what this means where we basically grab, if you have a look at this, it's grabbing, so if you have a look at our path which is source and then sus and then theme pages and it's grabbing all of this and putting it into its own demo page which is let's look at our list let's close this in is in css demo one and then pages and if you see here its own css and stuff for grid and lists and posts for blog and if you go to demo two, little pages, little blog, you have similar uh, CSS files. Okay. So now that we understand how this works, let's go ahead and compile the default settings for demo one into our project assets. So in this demo, in this video, we will go through the creation of custom SAS and JS files. But we will be using demo one as our base example. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and open our. Yep, so our assets file is opened or uh, ex expanded. So let's go ahead and run GUP. And what you can do, see here is all of our. Uh, vendors and our demos or demo one but often that was only demo one because we are declaring demo one here will be then deployed compiled and deployed into our SS folder so let's have a look right here as you can see it's deploying all that so you can look here we see only demo one being compiled compared to if I look at our assets and CSS here we have all demos compiled here but when we define as demo one, it only compiles demo one. Similar with JS, our media is a global um, asset, so it, it uh, stores everything. And then same with our custom and global. Okay, so now how do we add or customize Keen? There's a few ways to do that. One is you can just add your own um, SAS and CSS or JS files to wherever, whatever folder that you want and then include it manually into your HTML. But we recommend you guys to actually use Keen's build tool so that you can bundle your code within Keen's code and then you do not need to include any more uh, files into your uh, project source, which in then further optimize your code or your whole entire project. So let's do that fairly quickly. Uh, it's fairly simple to do that. So let's look into this. What we're doing is we're going to use demo one as our example, right? So if you want to create any new JS files or JS assets, we need to put it within demo one. So if you go to our assets, JS team, and then demos and go to demo one, we then need to put our demo, our custom JS files in this folder. Because if you look in our demo, it's basically grabbing all of demo one's files or JS files within demo one into our bundle, which is our scripts.bundle. 
So let's go ahead and do just that. Let's create a new let's create a new folder. Say my scripts. Okay. And in my scripts, let's create a new file with the same name. Uh, let's call it save and call it my script dot js. And then in here we then type in our script. Let's do a simple script. Documents dot ready. And then we can do a simple alert. Say hello. And save that. Okay, so now let's have a look at our scripts.bundle.js first before we compile it. So it's right here. So if you look, we have uh, all of our basically our JS files that's being bundled into a single file. So we have our core uh, JS files, which is our KTM and uh, our libraries and whatnot. So if you scroll all the way down, we see our KT layouts initializing. So if you look into our build uh, tool, we see the last thing that we are adding into the bundle is um, this uh, the files, all the files within this, which is if you look into our demo one assets, we see the last file that is being included is the layout.js. So if you look here, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, we see the same initialization. So now that we have my scripts here, so let's go ahead and run our build tool. Let's run gulp and compile that and see our assets get refreshed and look into our script bundle, scroll all the way to the bottom and then we see our uh, script included into the bundle file. Basically, scripts dot bundle file, and how do we test that? Uh, at the moment, we can't really test it because we do not have any uh, basically HTML files to actually load this. So maybe what we can do is we can just revert this to our source just to have a look, so we can actually demonstrate it or basically see our changes. Save that. So let's now override our actually our our basically our keen source destination files just to have a look so let's compile it so you see that changing we go to our js we go to demo one this is what we're only compiling scripts bundle for demo one scroll all the way to the bottom and again we see our code so let's go ahead and load that up so we are at my keen app uh, we got our source, you got our destination, we got demo one, and let's go to index. Load that up, and our script is working along with everything else within Keen. Okay, so that is essentially how you can easily and very efficiently add your own scripts within Keen. So, how do we add SAS in with Keen? Similar, it's also similar with. Uh, how you add your JS file. So if you have a look in demo one or all of the demos, we have a specific style.sas file. So we look at style.sas. So if you look at our source, let's close our JS and sas. It's this. Go to team, go to demos, and go to demo one. We've got styles.sas. And in here you see what's being included into the entire uh, SAS. We see the config is being included, the bootstrap being included, and then our own custom ex uh, bootstrap that extends the default bootstrap. And then we include uh, Keen's core. And then we have our demo config files and then our layout config files. So when you want to add a custom SAS uh, file of your own for your own project, all you have to do it's just import it, import your own custom file into 
Keynes style.sas and then when we compile the entire SAS, your uh, file will be added at the right at the bottom that overrides all of oops all of Keen's um, SAS files. But since we do not have anything, uh, basically we do not have any custom scripts created yet, let's go ahead and do just that. So we can create a new folder within our demo called let's say my my style maybe my styles and then in my styles we can create a new file called my style dot sus and in here we can create uh anything we want we can always create a like my style and then maybe we have a background color to say white save that and we need to include our styles into the style.sus so let's type in our file style then s and then my dash style so um, let's have a look at our style bundle first before we compile it which is within the CSS demo one style bundle. Scroll all the way to the bottom. And now let's compile it to see our styles get included into the bundle. See our vendors, our, all our assets get refreshed right here. And there you have it. Our styles. At right at the bottom of our bundle. However, if you want to um, like overwrite something within Keen, like let's say I want to overwrite my, let's say I want to overwrite a, mm, let's see, what do I want to overwrite? Let's look at maybe something that is a little more obvious to have to still look. Okay, uh, let's try to change, say, this font size, right? So let's have a look. Well, this is basically invoice one dot HTML. If we look into our source, now uh, we need to look at where the source is. It's in custom invoices, uh, custom invoices, and then invoice one. So let's check that out. So it's in and one custom invoices invoice one and then we also want to check out the sas file for that we should be located in the sas pages and an invoice and an invoice one so you can see here we can see kt invoice one and then let's do a quick search for kt dash invoice one so we have our elements here starting from here all the way down and we want to change what do you say that we want to change this right so let's look into our style structure which is the summary body so if you look into our summary body which is here and we can see the path which is calling the uh, uh kt invoice one body and then that's under kt invoice one so what we need to do is we need to basically recreate the structure into our custom style and then double check if that's what we're doing summary body oh we need one more thing we need summary body as well and then what you want to do here is perhaps you want to change the font size to uh maybe 30 pixels and then if we look into our bundle file and then compile it okay it's done our sus is now there our css is now there if you look into our demo which is this do a quick refresh and as you can see our js is working 
our SaaS is working. So there you have it. I certainly hope that you found this video um, informative. If you did, so please give us a thumbs up. And we really appreciate every like that we get for our videos. And also please uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn on the notification bell so that every time when we release a new video, you get an update. Also follow us on our social media, which is uh, Twitter, Facebook and others. Links will be in the description below. And I'll see you in the next video. Good luck in your projects. Take care.